let's get started. What am I going to do tonight? Three more tutorials. So same thing as last night. So bring out, pull up your, or not last night, last Wednesday, uh, Monday night. Now slow down a little bit. What day of the week is this? Wednesday. Okay, good. Temperature conversions. So in this particular video, uh, video, presentation, PowerPoint, whatever you want to call it, is also downloadable. I've populated with a two more of them. So this is the one that was left over from Monday. Also <coughs> going over this evening, and you might want to download these when you get a chance. Uh, let's see, in the lectures directory. I probably should have put them somewhere else. Yeah. We have one called toolbars that I'm going to do, and one called introspection. The introspection one is going to be interesting, and that's the one that the iPhone or the Objective-C people are probably going to be interested in, in looking at as well, because this one's going to go over the dynamic nature of Objective-C and how objects are instantiated and how you can change properties of objects during the runtime of the program, which is kind of interesting. All of these apps are fairly easy, and we're going to build them. And um, the temperatures, the conversions, that's going to be string to numbers, numbers back to strings, along with buttons for Fahrenheit and Celsius, and basically showing you how to put the pieces together. The toolbars is going to show you features of a window and a controller. So we'll add another controller, it's kind of like what we did on day one or two with the uh, tab bar controller. But it's uh, a little bit interesting. It's different, a little bit more interesting. And there's a, a little bit, it's easier one to follow as well. It doesn't use a storyboard. And then uh, <coughs> we'll finish up with, um, see how long we can take, I'll see how long it takes. And hopefully we'll get them all done tonight. Temperature conversions. <clears throat> so create a single view application. So I'm going to go to Xcode and uh, I haven't mastered the cutting and pasting yet so let's see what happens tonight. Create a new application and this is going to be a single view application so use this option on the right. And eventually we are actually going to use some of the other ones. <coughs> And uh, making my life easy now, instead of using Universal here, I'm going to put everything on iPhone for this evening. And that way we don't, we don't get, and I'm not using a storyboard, so I'm only going to get the XIB file for the iPhone. So I'm going to select iPhone. And uh, this one's going to be, uh, I'm going to call this one Temps, um, just to make, make it easy. Um, select the Use Auto Reference Counting, so make sure that that is selected. And then the other two don't need to be selected. And then go ahead and press next, save it. I'm just going to put mine on the desktop. And lo and behold, I get a nice empty project. And they used, actually, they refer to this as a template project. But, uh, and you can see I have uh, an XIB file here, just one this time, that is for the iPhone. And uh, I clicked on it. There we go. Making sure the project files and everything get initialized. So, so far, so good. Now I'm going to create a GUI, a UI that looks like this one. There's actually two more, there's two more labels on here <clears throat> that I forgot. When I took the screenshot, I forgot to put the labels on here. And the labels look, uh, I, I moved ahead a little bit. The labels are going to be blank until we populate them with the data. So this is actually going to show you how to write data out to labels as well. <clears throat> so we have to remember we have to put two more labels on here. Um, I need to redo this and put the labels on here, but uh, they're missing. I'm glad I remembered that actually. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start dragging and putting stuff on here. So I'm going to type on label in my library <clears throat> to bring up the UI label. And this one just is going to show temperatures on the top. Oops. I dragged it over, stick it in the middle. I'm going to put temperatures up here. And I'm going to actually change my background. You go ahead and do whatever you, it is you want to your GUI right now. Hopefully you have the skills right now to actually just sort of just do it on your own. shouldn't have to tell you how to do that at this point. <clears throat> so I have uh, that, and I'm going to go ahead and put a input box underneath it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to grab those two labels, the invisible ones. Stick them here. Looks pretty good. And uh, 
And this one here for the text box. This is where the user is going to enter in a temperature that's going to be converted. It looks like I need a couple buttons too, so I'll put some, oops, some buttons on here. <coughs> if I type it incorrectly, here we go. Go on here. And I don't know how to do that special character for the degrees, so I'm just going to put C in this one. And then uh, <coughs> F in this one. So when the user types in um, a number up here, temperature, I'm going to press C and it's going to give me you know, whatever the degrees is, and, and it's going to put C over here, and then if I press F, it's going to put F in here, <clears throat> and then convert it as well to the appropriate one. So I'm going to cross-check to see if I've done the GUI correctly, and I have something that looks like that, but remember those two labels that we need to put in there. So. And now, I'm going to drag, control drag, put everything on the .h file, so I'm going to come over here and click on that little tuxedo up here. And if I click on the tuxedo, it opens up the pane over here. And I'm going <clears> to... <throat> what are we doing over here? I'm going to switch to the... Um, actually, I want to switch this one here. The controller X. I want to have that on there twice. Weird. Hmm. Okay. Why? Um, hmm. Okay, my selector isn't uh, isn't working properly. Uh, let me try something else here. I'm trying to switch to the view controller H and still have the GUI showing. Close this one. Ha! Ah, there we go. This is a. Uh, I know, you're learning from me by watching me struggle, <laughs> but uh, this is one of the worst interfaces and I don't particularly like it, so you'll have to deal with me. And when I don't like something, I don't spend too much time to get to familiar with all of the buttons and everything. And this this is the, the brand new interface as well, so it's really ticking me off because in the future, it's going to grow like this. I'm going to have all these little things, these nuances. But anyway, open up both panes because you're going to want to drag it over. And I have the wrong file open, actually. I have the dot M, I want the dot H. So view controller dot H is what you want to open. And uh, I was like, now I just double check everything because it'll allow you to drag and drop into the dot M or the dot H. I personally think it should not allow. I should not allow that. I should just go into the dot H. But, and we know that the dot H is, at this point is the interface file. So I had two more labels for the output. We did that already. Um, so it'll control drag the two labels and put them in the text box to. Uh, the view.h, and then control drag um, the buttons themselves, and it's going to be the touch down activity on the buttons. And I'm going to actually kind of take a peek here at the code um, F button and C button. And I just want to make sure I'm, because I didn't actually put down the labels that you should give them. So we're going to call the buttons, uh, if you're going to cut and paste and use this code, which I'm going to attempt to do, we're going to call the buttons F button and C button, and then the labels. Um, the labels, let's take a look at the code here. It's going to be degrees for the degree and uh, probably, uh, let's see, Fahrenheit text. <clears throat> uh, temperature is going to be the other one. Um, okay, sounds good. Uh, looks like we're taking the temperature. So we'll call this one the temperature. So <clears throat> this label here, I'm going to click on the control key, and dragging it over to the interface, letting go. And I'm going to call this one temperature. And I'm going to leave it on the uh, UI field. Because so, it's going to pull the temperature. I could not insert a new outlet connection. Could not find any information for the class name view controller. Oh, excellent. <coughs> All right. What is wrong with my Xcode? Mm. Let's just try it one more time. All right, I'm going to click.
close the project. Open it back up again. Actually, let me save the project. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. I'm not supposed to get that error message. I'm going to close the project down and open it back up again fresh and start over again. So it gives you some time to catch up if you just started. <laughs> um, all right. I don't know why. I have something strange feeling it had to do something with the clicking around that I had to do initially. So I'm going to call this temper temperatures. Looks good to me. Let's see if this is going to have the same problem. No? Okay, good. We're in good shape this time. Let me just make sure, though. Let me just do this quickly. Okay, so I'm going to put the uh, text box on there. Just want to make sure I don't get the same message again. Nope, that time it worked. Okay, see, this is what I tell you. It's just, you can't get frustrated over it. You just continue going. You use me as a, as a model here. It happens to me, too. <laughs> and you know what I do is I always just close the project down and start it up fresh. The only problem is you can't do that if you're, like, halfway in the middle of a project you've been working on for, like, six months. You know, here's the, here's the, key, here's the key with that one, though. You just take the files and you drag them out <laughs> of the folder. You put them on the desktop or somewhere else create a brand new project and then drag the files back in. <laughs> so you don't have to rewrite all that source code. <clears throat> okay, so let me put these labels out here. So quickly rebuild this. And add the buttons. This one's a C. This one's a F. Okay, good. Okay, so I have this back. So I dragged and dropped the text box over. I'm going to take and also put the labels over as well. So I'm going to control drag everything over. And uh, this one's going to be uh, maybe uh, degrees. Let's see. The other one's going to be degrees. Uh, let's see. Temperature is the text that's coming in. Fahrenheit.txt. Fahrenheit.txt. Oh, this is going to be the. Oh, so it's a Fahrenheit coming in and it's a temperature that's going to be over here. Oh, well. So this temperature is actually Fahrenheit. So I can change that. But I'll call this one temperature. Uh, two. This one's going to be degrees. UI label. Very good. Okay, now for the buttons, we're going to use the uh, touch control, touch down. So I'm going to right mouse click on the uh, button itself to bring up the little window. Always remember on the buttons, you can put the element out there as an outlet, or you can put it as an IB action. If you just drag it over like I did with the labels and the text boxes, it's going to be an outlet. Outlets are so good. You can change the color of the button. You can change the nature of the button. But in order to get the activity, you have to create an IB action. Um, so you have two choices there. Um, so you always want to create IB actions with that. I'm gonna. I like the touch down. Uh, a lot of people uh, use the touch up inside. Doesn't really matter which one you're going to use. Uh, so the touch down, and this is going to be. I'm changing the type to IB button. And this one's going to be called. Uh, I think a C button. C button. And I'm gonna go connect. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the F button. So I'm control, pressing down the control key, right mouse clicking. Excuse me, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to right mouse click, bring up the little button, because I want to do the touch down action. Touch down. And then bring it over. And I'm going to call this one the F button. And I'm going to change the type to the uh, UI button. And it's the touch down control. So your uh, GUI is created. 
And this is actually called wiring. We have just wired the components to the interface, which is the .h file. And at this point, I'm going to just actually run the project and make sure that, because I had so many problems in the beginning, especially with that first, I had to redo it. So I'm going to make sure at least I have a working project, at least. So I'm going to run it, just make sure everything runs. Usually, it's not a bad idea to test it after you populate the GUI and drag it and create the interface. Because at that point, nothing else is going to go wrong, really. When you do the implementation, you might have some source code errors. In fact, I have some button errors right now. But uh, you see, uh, we've got our regular behavior, and everything seems to be working properly. So I'm going to go ahead and close the simulator. And I uh, have made it past that far. So now I'm going to switch over from the .h file and go back to the .m file. Or go over to the .m file. And if you see that, I've got uh, temperature and temperature 2 over here. And I'm going to have to be creative because now I have to rename my variables inside my code that I put in there. So if you need something a little bit differently, when we cut and paste the code in there, we're going to get some, I'm going to get some error messages because the labels of my code are a little bit different. So what we're really going to essentially do is take this text convert it and we've seen the conversions already from text to numbers so we're going to go from text to a float and then we are going to uh, put it back out into this label here which is going to be our degrees and then we're going to show an F or a C for the other label so it's nothing more than uh, populating the screen out again so if I look at my instructions on the viewcontroller.m file I am going to do something. I'm going to cut and paste the actions. There's two button actions. And so these are the button actions that go along with the IV button that we've defined in the interface. This is the implementation for it. So I like to put them at the bottom of the code because if you look at the bottom of the code, I actually already have the button signatures created. And it's created for me automatically. Your versions of Xcode, is the current one does this for you automatically. So I'm actually going to I'm actually going to, now that I'm getting experience with my cut and pasting, I'm actually just going to take the method body out of there. So this is for the F button, or Fahrenheit button. And when I paste it in here, I'm going to make sure I paste it into the Fahrenheit code. Obviously, if you were writing this program yourself, you would be writing the code yourself. You wouldn't be cutting and pasting it. <laughs> so, so this is kind of an unrealistic um, testing environment. However, you know, it saves me from having to actually write the code. And it gives you a working example. Um, so temperature.txt, which is this one up here, is, uh, is going to be working for us, it appears. Uh, so I have double here. And the screen is kind of narrow, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. Fahrenheit text is equal to, let's just get those strange characters out of the way. <sighs> Let's take a look here. Called object by. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just make this window a little bit bigger. <sighs> Type double. Double. Okay. I believe I have this project actually saved already with a correct cutting. This text. Uh, hold on a second. Get rid of all the formatted characters in here. Hmm. Ah, It'd be helping if I uh, did this correctly. Um, okay, Plan B. Temps. <laughs> I'll just cut and paste it out of this file here. I believe I have it in here. And this, this is the other tips. Uh, Viewcontroller.h. Just want to be sure. Mm -hmm. Out temp, start temp, out temp, out degrees. All right, so let me just open up that project. I know, now I'm being lazy. You cut and paste it in. We're gonna have to. And here's a. Okay, so now I'm just being lazy. So, I've brought open the screen. We've dragged and dropped, and now on the .m file, what I wanted to do, which I got lazy about, was actually insert in. Oops. Make sure I get the .m file open here. 
The method bodies for both of the Fahrenheit and the Celsius. So what we're looking at here, and I had to change the variables around, what we're doing is taking the start temp. And the start temp is this field here. So if I go up like this, I'm going to see this button here is the C button. And in my interface, I called it start temp in this particular example. And start temp is this temp. So you can kind of cross-check your logic. You're going to need to do this unless you called it the same names that I called it, which is you probably didn't. So this property here is uh, referred to as the uh, start temp. And then I've got the label for the out temp. I believe I called it out temp here. And then this one was the uh, UI label for out degrees. Out degrees. So out temp and out temp, out degrees. And then the two buttons. And the two buttons you probably did label C button and F button if you did. Um, so if I go back to the correlating code for which I have lazily cut and pasted and put in here, I'm going to see the two buttons are right here on the bottom of the code. And let me just walk through the code for you. Um, so when this button here, the action that's associated with the C button, takes the NS string, and we're going to call it to Celsius because it's the C button. And it's going to be equal to get the text from the start stream. So this this start temp. So this object is called start temp in our labeling. Text is essentially just saying that, you know, get the text, essentially. And so we have it actually added to and assigned to, to, to this variable that we're creating as a string. So we're taking the string and then we're going double, double C. So we're doing a typecast from the string to a double and that's going to be this times this times and then we're going to we're, we're putting in in the here actually it's probably easier to see the code actually in here because this is so much so much word wrapping is going on there there we go so it's now on one line instead of having to word wrap it I can make it a little bit bigger probably too let's see okay that's pretty enough I think probably um, so on the code, if you download it, cut and paste and put it in, you're going to need to change this temperature to the input box. And then the double C, so we're doing a new variable. And we oh, notice here actually that this is a NS string object, which is why it's using the pointer. And I just covered this earlier in the object of C course as well. Um, and this is the name of the variable. And this is going to be the method call get the text. Essentially it's like get text, set text, get text. So um, setters and getters, if you remember from properties of the synthesize. Um, so this is the text from temperature, double C, well here's our calculation, times, and don't worry about the calculation for Celsius to Fahrenheit, but we're just doing a basic, uh, basic formula for that. And we're going to take this to Celsius variable and we're going to run double value, so return a double value, which is our typecasting method. And we saw this when we took, um, we created floats, we said uh, float value um, last time, so this was a continuation actually of that previous example, minus 32. And then we have Fahrenheit text. Well, that's going to be another label that's on there that is actually, in my particular example, I called it output text. So this is the output text label over here. Output text is going to be equal to that string that we just, uh, just created. Um, excuse me, that double that we just created, converted to a string. So and a string alloc, which means create a new string with integer with format. Well, this is just basically the initializer for the creation of the object. Um, if you were here in the Objective C class or if you missed it, go ahead and watch that video um, from today. Actually, we talked about initializers as well. This initializer is called init with format, just like this printf, actually. It runs with the same type of um, character formatting. Um, the 2.0 means give us, it's like the dot 2 I did last time with the fair, with the float to give the precision of 0 0.2, um, two, two bases past the decimal. I ah, can't talk today. This is going to give us 2, so two, 2, like 10, 20, 30, you know, dot with 1, so dot O. Um, so, and then C, well, what's C? Well, C is our double C. So we're taking our double and we're actually treating it like a float, but a double and a float is actually the same in terms of the conversion. And then the degree, well, that's the other text label, excuse me, the other label that's to the right of the temperature that we're printing out. 
and we're running. We're going to run a set test, a set text, a uh, text, and a set text, and we're going to put a C there. And we're doing the same calculation in the opposite order with a slightly different calculation to take the starting temperature, apply a different formula to it to put it in Fahrenheit. So we're assuming that this number is not in any format at all to begin with, and we're just going to convert it to Fahrenheit, or we're going to convert it to Celsius. Assuming that it's in Fahrenheit for here, and assuming that it's in Celsius here, we're going to convert it back and forth. Well, the calculation is slightly wrong because of the logic, but the program actually does convert. It just is not going to convert the number we're going to think it's going to start out with. But uh, it does actually work, um, and the purpose of this is actually to show you the set and the tech, set and the gets. So you might notice here, and I'm going to go back to the code to actually show you to you this way. When we created the GUI, and you actually demonstrate that part, we're dragging and dropping and sticking on the .h file. In here, these became properties, and the properties turned into synthesized method up here, where we had to synthesize. What this is doing for us is it's automatically giving us our setters and our getters. And the setters and the getters are, well, get a value for the property, set a value for the property. The property that we're looking at is the text and the text on the label. So get text and set text. You're not going to see that written in the code. It's not here. You're never going to see. You can write those yourself if you want to. But why? <laughs> Um, instead, have, have Objective-C do it for you. So what we're getting then is the ability to run these methods. And most people go, well, where did this method come from? Set text. We're running a method set text. It's not in the code, but it's automatically generated by the property in the synthesized format. And it's for degree. So generally, the format is text, which is going to be the text, and then set text. And that's, the text is the property of the, of the label. So we can go label.text is equal to something. So we are sort of dynamically allocating, actually, and dynamically setting that value. So if I run the program, and I, really the entire source code for the program are those two, two functions, those two methods that run the, the F and the C buttons. And then I'll show you the little quirkiness of it, actually. But uh, if I put a temperature up here like 10, well, actually, what is it, 70? 7 degrees, well, that's 100 fit. Well, okay, because I started out with it. So it's going to, it's still doing our conversion, but our conversion is, uh, start, if we're starting out with a Fahrenheit, it's assuming we're starting out with a Fahrenheit value. And then we can go. It's 21 degrees Celsius. <laughs> but then if I could, here I'm going from 21 degrees Celsius back to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a little, not the best design. So it's a little confusing, actually, but uh, it's still performing the behavior that was desired in terms of the demonstration. So, And uh, for those of you who want to take numbers and convert them to something and then put them back out as numbers in the form of a calculator for calculator functionality, which might come in handy for assignments, this is a format that you can do it in. And the format can be examined by looking at the the code for the buttons essentially. And it's just doing a simple conversion. So. And the output looks like that, which is what we saw actually. In fact, I showed you the program that I wrote that uh, <laughs> I took the screenshot for. So, All right, so that was what we were supposed to have finished up last time. So hopefully, someone got a working, uh, maybe someone got a working one out of that. Did you get, did you, did you get it working? Uh, well, if the cac if the buttons are working and the temperature is wrong, it's probably your labels. Yeah. But the buttons are working? The, yeah, the buttons are working. Okay, good. The label, the label came out with uh, 2.0. Uh, yeah, I was just showing a minute ago. Mine actually comes out wrong, too. Oh. <laughs> if I assume, if I run it like this, is uh, 70 degrees, is that, I have to refresh my math there, is that 21 degrees Celsius? 70 degrees Fahrenheit? I think it is. No? What's tw yeah, I think. No, no, that's not. Tw yeah, mine's wrong, too. I think it's the formula that's wrong. So if I put 70 in here and I go Celsius, I get 21, but then I go Fahrenheit, I get 158. If you're getting that, it's not your fault. It's the code. And it's the formula. It's the, it's the formula for the buttons. So. 
But if you're switching numbers, if this is actually switching, and when you hit this, you get an F over here, you get a C over here, then you got the desired functionality that you're supposed to get out of this. I probably should have done something a little simpler, <laughs> like maybe a summation or something instead. But uh, a little too fancy. It does. I think that what's um. Does anyone actually know what 70 degrees Fahrenheit is in Celsius? Yeah, you know what? It's easy to find out. <laughs> Let's see real quick here. 70 Fahrenheit to Celsius. It's 21. It is right. It is correct. That's why I, th I thought it was 21 degrees. Well, this is rounded, actually. So. The formula does work. <laughs> but... It's assuming that this is, <coughs> I guess this is assuming, if I put 21 in here, oh, you know what, it's not going to allow me to, if I put 21 in here, I should get 70 Fahrenheit, yep, I do. It's the logic of the buttons, so if I go 21 Fahrenheit, I'm getting 20, I'm getting negative 6, because it's think, taking this as a Fahrenheit value, yeah, it's not switching it back to what it's supposed to be, so that's, the formula does work, it's the logic that's messed up in terms of the button clicking. As long as this goes away, you know what? We could fix the design of this program by making this disappear. So if I typed in 70 and I go Celsius and then I made this disappear, you'd have to put another, and then you put, you know, type in Fahrenheit here. Because <laughs> it's assuming this is always be Fahrenheit. So. Okay, so that's good to know. Designing with UI toolbars. A little easier, not as much code. So this one I'm going to get through without having to go back to my pre-tested uh, version of it. And trust me, I only have these problems when I go to demonstrate something. <laughs> I never have these problems when I'm working on my own. Uh, so go ahead and open up a new Xcode project and click on the single view application as before and go ahead and click next. And uh, this one, I'm going to call this one toolbar. Toolbars. I'll put two S's on there just in case I have it already saved like that. And uh, this is going to be the iPhone and uh, use automatic reference counting. And uh, go ahead and press next. So go ahead and save it. So I got saved to the desktop. And I open it up. I go, well, what are toolbars? It's an interesting concept. So new UI navigation controller, we've seen it already. And let me just explain something, actually, just refresh your memory on the concept. This view controller is called view controller XIB, which is the interface for the view controller. And this would be the controller. So in a model view controller scenario, which is why this terminology is being used, this is actually the view. And this is the controller to the view, which is why it's called view controller. In the storyboard, it's called storyboard, and then it's called view controller, and then app delegate can be used for any purpose you want, actually. So we're going to experiment a little bit with the view controller and the navigation of the view controller. So the UI navigation controller contains the UI toolbar uh, for the view controller in its stack. So in here, we have nested inside of the navigation controller the UI toolbar, which is what we're looking at today. The toolbar is normally hidden, but we can place buttons on it and display it at any time. So open a single view application. We've done that already. Um, select iPhone for the type. We've done that already. We're going to add a new class. And the new class is going to be called Main View Controller. So we're going to add another controller that we're going to nest inside of the view controller, sort of like what we did with the tab bar example but not using the storyboard, only looking at the controller components. So I am going to create a new class and call it main view controller. And make sure I have this correct here. Make sure that the class is a subclass of the UI view controller and also create an XIV file for the controller's views as shown. Now that's going to be created automatically. So in here, you want to make sure you select the UI view controller so you can get the XIB file that goes along with it. Because remember around here, we get these three sets. Here we get viewcontroller.h, viewcontroller.m, and viewcontroller.xib. So I'm going to go File, New, File, and 
I'm going to say Objective C class. Am I going to do that? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm going to go Coco Touch. Make sure I have switched over from the wrong class. And next. And I'm on UI View Controller automatically. If yours is not on there automatically, you can select, um, you know, open it up or just type in here. If you just type in here, View. Oops. View Controller, it'll fill in for you. Don't call it View Controller, otherwise, this one is called View Controller. So we want to call it Main. I'm just going to put Main in there. Main View Controller. To be consistent with the example, hopefully. Hopefully, things will work correctly this way. And I know on the previous example, I have to put names for those labels now because that's kind of confusing. Uh, so, what do we got here? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, make sure I got this right. Okay, good. I believe I'm on the right track. So, I am going to select next. And I'm going to select the location in, tool, in toolbars, same directory that I have my project in. And I have main view controller, main view controller, and the view controller. And I did not get what I needed to get. Ah, because I did not select with XIB for user interface. Ah. So what I just did is demonstrated a mistake that you're going to make, possibly, because I forgot a step. So this is good. This is why I'm doing this, because, you know, it, it's okay for me to make mistakes, because you're going to make mistakes. We're all going to figure out how to do this, essentially. All right, so I'm going to do it again. Um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove it. I'm going to remove it, actually. Can I remove it? Yeah, I can delete it. Remove reference. Move to trash. Move to trash. I'm going to rebuild it again because I, I forgot to select the XIB file because I want an XIB file that goes along with it. Because this XIB file here is for the view controller, the main one. I want to create another set of the same thing. So I'm going to go File, New, File. And I'm going to go Next. And I'm going to put Main in here. And hopefully that delete. And then click on With XIB for User Interface. Because you know if you don't do it, you're not going to get it. You're just going to get the .h and the .m, because I want another interface. So I'm going to select Next, and I'm going to save it right where I saved it. So I basically, now I have what I want. So now I come over here and I go, oh, this is what I want. I want a .h, and I want a .m, and I want an XIB. That all say Main View Controller on them. So hopefully you've gotten to this point. And uh, now we are going to edit the app delegate .h. All right, so if we have this view controller here, and we've got this view controller over here, what's going to hold us together is the app delegate. Because we can put stuff in either one of the view controllers, and the view controllers, as we know, are controlling the views. So we can switch between the different views using the app delegate as the controller in terms of the interface of what we're going to produce here. So edit app delegate. Um, so we're going to start up, uh, we're going to set up the navigation controller. Having the main view controller object as its root view controller. So we're going to select the app delegate h file and add two properties for the UI controller and the main view controller as shown in the next slide here. So I'm going to type this in actually. I can handle the typing I think. Uh, so I'm going to open up app delegate.h, which is the header file. We always start with the header, we always start with the interface before we do the implementation. Because if we do it in the opposite order, then we have an implementation that we're going to get error messages for completely. And it ends up, you know, Xcode will try to fill in stuff for you and it makes mistakes. So in order for the app delegate to know about, because the app delegate is going to control the controller, we actually have to import it. So I'm going to go ahead and make some typos first and then I'm gonna go ahead and type in import <laughs> main view control. Oh good see. So some typing is not bad because of the autocomplete. Alright now I'm gonna worry about uh, actually I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna double click on this to bring it out so that I can type this way. Which is probably what I should have done in the other example. <laughs> I'm sorry? The member class. No, we're actually gonna we're gonna make the app delegate control the main view controller. What do you mean by the member class? Am I in the wrong file? No, I'm in the .h file. Oh, because I, I didn't see the uh, 
import uh, class for the view controller? Oh, here it is here. Oh, we're not going to use it. Well, we might use it. The main view controller is probably is going to call the view controller. But we're going to use the app delegate to call the main view controller. You'll, you'll actually see how this comes together um, in the multiple pieces. So we'll have one view called the other view. And the app delegate is going to call the first view um, in terms of how the logic is going to work. Um, we're manually, instead of dragging it, we could have dragged it, but this is harder. It's easier to type it in, I think. Uh, you can do it through a control drag, but I'm not having very much luck with it. Every time I do it, it comes a, a really sloppy. So we're going to leave this stuff in here because we have the UI window. We have the UI responder, which is going to be... And th this is actually acting as the controller. So when we had the tab... Okay, so this is a single view application that we opened up that we made a template for. And we added another view. So actually what we have now is a two view application. When we do the tab, when we looked at the tab view controller, uh, tab view application template, it gave us the controller. So we're actually manually creating a controller right now. And we're going to use the app delegate for it. Which is actually, we used, I can't remember what we used in there. We had a different controller. We, had it, we, we were using the storyboard for it, which was um, a more automated way of doing it for tab views, but this isn't a tab view, it's a view calling view. So by default the app delegate has the UI responder in there that's going to respond to the UI events to perhaps you know change the views hopefully for us. Uh, so the UI window, the UI view controller, this is our main controller that existed before. Um, so now I'm going to add the, uh, the new controller. So at property strong non why didn't it fill that in? Unless I misspelled it. UI, we're actually going to add in two. New UI, UI navigation controller, and, which is going to be a new, oops, I'm going asterisk, nav controller is what I'm going to call it. And then the other one is going to be the root view controller. Uh, and what did I do here? Well, let's just see what happens here. Mm -hmm. Oh, string. That's why. Strong. Strong string. Uh, let's see. Non atomic. This is why I hate typing. Main view controller. That's the one we just created, which is going to be called our root view controller. Okay. What we're doing is we're tying all the controllers together and putting them in the app delegate. And this is the .h file, which means we're going to have to implement the functionality that's going to go along with this interface that we're creating. All right, so I'm going to close this window here. Well, I hope it saves automatically, by the way. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it does. So if I click on the app, I've got the two items in here as, as expected. OK, good. So now we are going to edit the app delegate.m. And we're going to first finalize our properties because they're not being finalized manually. So what we're doing is manually doing what we were doing automatically with what I was calling the wire connections. But instead of taking the, the actual windows and wire connecting them, we're going to do them this way so I can kind of customize the names. Um, so I'm going to double click here on the appdelegate.m. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, minimize this. And uh, here we need to add the synthesize. It synthesize creates the setters and the getters for us. And so we're going to put them at the top with the rest of the synthesizer. So you can see I have one in, in here already for the view controller. So add it underneath the one that's already existing for the one that was built in. So I'm going to say synthesize and I'm going to say uh, nav controller, which is what we called it actually, equals underscore nav controller. So I have that one in there, and then I have the other one, the main root controller. So I'm going to make this big here, at synthesize uh, root controller, 
So this is what we're doing. What we're doing manually was done automatically for us in that last example when I dragged over and we created the property in the synthesized sets. As soon as you add the properties to the .h, the synthesizers automatically get created for you. But because we manually added the properties to the .h here, we have to manually add the synthesizer to it. That's, there's pros and cons to the automation, actually. Um, okay, good. So I added the two that I needed. I'm going to go ahead and save this just to make sure. All right. So now we're going to change a method in the app delegate. Okay, so the app delegate, when the, when the life cycle of the app occurs, we know we have a when it loads, when it's not loading, when it, when it unloads, when it finishes. All this stuff is pre-built methods that we can override or change the implementation for. So we're going to change the did finish launching with options, which means we launched the app. When it did finish, we're going to modify the method to create some custom behavior for ourselves. So it's the only method we'll be making any changes to. Leave everything else in place. And the method that we're going to change, and let me cut and paste it. Actually, now I have another idea I'm going to do. Instead of trying to cut and paste this, I'm going to cut and paste it out of an existing project that should be out here, UI tab bar. I'm going to cheat. Uh, it's the did finish launch with options. So here's the, the, me here's the method here that's already coded correctly without any formatting from PowerPoint or anything. And I'm gonna, so you can cut and paste it out or type it in from the lecture and put it in there. Um, it's this code here and it's the did finish launching with options method. So you can easily probably, while I'm talking, but I see I have some bold here and stuff. So if I cut and paste this, it's gonna be a nightmare. So I'm gonna go in here and this is from here, so I'm going to close that one out. Go back into the project that I have opened. Here it is. Open up the app delegate.m, which I have. Here it is. And I'm going to take this as the first method actually that appears in this file underneath the synthesize. First method is that it did finish with, out, uh, with options, and then so I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to go through this code in a few minutes so you can kind of see what's going on. Only code we're changing. Leave everything else alone. Pretty good. So what are we doing? Okay, so first we're going to allocate and initialize the root view controller. So in the first part here, we're going to here's the root view controller. We're allocating it by main view controller alloc, which means make a new instance of this object and initialize it. Initialize it with nib name nil nil, which means it's going to be empty. It's not going to load up with anything. And then for the root controller, we're going to set the title to main view. Oops. There we go. So the nib name is nil in the case. So it directs the compiler to associate this controller with the XIB file that will be created with it. So we have an XIB file that's going to be created with the main view controller.xib. Then we have a bundle of nil that directs the compiler to use the applications bundle, which is that next line of code that goes underneath it here. Um, which, uh, did I put that in there? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay, good. Um, then we have, uh, we're going to initialize, so after we initialize the controller, we're going to set the title to main view. And this is the title that's going to appear on the navigation bar for the window controller. And then on the nav controller object, we have to set up the nav controller object next. So we're going to make the root view controller its object's root view controller by adding the controller's view to the main view window as a sub view. So we're going to nest the two views. So we have the main view, and then we're going to have the sub view, which is so we have the root view, and then we have the main view. When it comes together, you'll go, oh, that's what she's talking about. Maybe I should have shown it. I don't have it actually created, so I have to go through this. Uh, let's see. And then we're going to make the main view the key 
and visible, and then we're off and running, essentially. So in order to do that, so make the main view controller, which is what we've done actually in here. We've put the navigation controller inside of the main view, and we put the main view inside of the root view. So we have three nested views going on here. So what we're going to do is change the color of the screen so we can tell the differences between the different views. When you click the buttons, and we're going to see what happens with the navigation. So on the main view controller, change the background color to something. So what's that going to be? It's the XIB. So then the XIB file of the main view controller, go ahead and put something in there. Um, let me change mine to kind of this pinky color. That way we know when the screen shows. <laughs> Otherwise, we're not going to know because this is all an experiment in terms of going from one screen to another screen from another screen. This is how we're going to nest the views. Okay. Since the view controller title property has already been set as main view in the app delegate, the title will appear on the top of the window interface when, the, when we run the app. So here's our thing. We've already in the app delegate.m, we set it to main view. So I'm going to put main view from ITU on here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. When I run it, actually, I think I probably could run it at this point. Let me run it, actually. I should get the title. Main view from ITU. So the code that we put into the app delegate file, the .m file, nested our views for us already. We don't have any functionality going on yet because we just have the main view here. The title is coming from the setting on the root. So we know that this is the root view controller title that's inside of, uh, well, it's in the root view controller that's nested inside of the window for which we have changed the view for. So this is this this label that's coming out is coming out of the root view controller. And then we have the navigation controller. And the navigation controller is going to do some other behavior for us. It's going to change the color of the screen in a few minutes. But uh, I believe we're also going to we're going to put some buttons on the bottom of the screen for this. So test your app, make sure you get the title showing up as the picture shows and then you're in good shape. Now we're going to take the main view controller.m file, open the main view controller m file, and then make these additions to the init with nib name. Because we set the nib to nil, so we're going to initialize it with the nib name and set the properties. And I'm going to cut and paste this up of my other existing file, which is why I created it, because I knew that it was going to knew that it was going to be uh, a lot of typing. So main view controller. You can cut and paste this out. Um, I can see we have some links to different types here. Uh, so let me go back and open up that code so I can cut and paste it in here. But I'm going to be editing this one here, mainviewcontroller.m. And uh, what I'm changing is this one right here, this method right here. It says init with nib name. And I'm going to pull it out of here. Main view controller. Oh, and I don't have it. Mm. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, I don't have it. I have to cut and paste it. No, maybe I have it in here. Put more buttons. Uh, I have to cut and paste it. Don't tell me that. Okay, let me cut and paste it. <laughs> I was hoping not to have to cut and paste it, uh, but I don't have the project created, so I don't have to. I have to cut and paste it. All right, so here we go. This is the last piece of code actually for this project. So, oh, I hate doing this. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I'm gonna make my life easier. About like this. This one's called the main view controller. I just want to make sure I'm replacing the proper proper function in it with name, nib, string, and to null. Okay, good. 
I'm going to go delete and do some editing in a few minutes here. Tons of editing in a few minutes here. Great. Actually, it's not too bad. I have to figure out a better way of doing this though in the future. You know what? It doesn't put line returns at the end. That's what the problem is. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I got patience. I can do this. See, there's like special characters in here. No, it's not going to work. Let's just do it this way. Hold on one second, I'm going to try something else. Put it in a text editor. <laughs> You're probably struggling with the same thing at the time, so it's actually... Alright, let me do something else. I don't like this either. Put it in WordPad. Ah, ah, better, better, better. Get rid of these. All right. Getting rid of the special care formatting. <coughs> Actually, you know what? Maybe I can just cut and paste out of here. Stick it in the notepad. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Let's do it this way. <laughs> notepad. That's better. Still better. Still better. This method alone. Good. Not gonna help me, is it? Not gonna be my friend. <laughs> Not gonna be my friend today. <sighs> I just because I just don't want to type all this because I don't want to type. All right. I'm sorry. Did you get to work? How did you get it to work? I mean, how did you get it to cut and paste correctly? Really? I believe I'm going to have this in a few minutes here. I'm just trying to make it look good. There we go. All right. I just have to have patience. And I'm going to get rid of the comments here, too. There we go. So you cut and pasted it out of Mac, and it worked, actually. All right, so perhaps because I'm going from a Windows screen to... Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so now I know for the future I'm not going to do that. There we go. It's good, good. I'm actually slowly getting there, which is good. <laughs> I just should not put it in PowerPoint, perhaps, is what I'm thinking. All right. This is good because it's allowing some people to catch up as well, if you're trying to do this.
<sighs> Spectre colon. Right. I'm not sure I don't have this out here. Hold on one second. This is killing me. Ah, here it is. I do have it out here. No, I do have it out here. Ah, look at that. I can just cut and paste it from here. I thought I had it out here. Okay, I am done playing around. I'm actually ready to begin finishing this. Close a few windows here now. <clears throat> Go back to the project. Get rid of this garbage. Paste, paste, paste. Ah, okay. So I have my code in here. All right, so now we can continue. <laughs> uh, definitely going to have a different setup next time. All right, so. Uh, we finished the did finish launching with options. So now what are we doing? Well, we're uh, looking at where this code was added to the appdelega.m file. And uh, we're allocating and initializing the root view controller. The nib name and the nil of nil, in this case, directs the uh, compiler to the associated uh, controller for the XIB file. We've set the main view. We've set the navigation object. We've put a background on there. We've just refreshing just in case because it's been a while since we looked at this. We changed the menu. We put the label on there. We're now editing main view controller.m. We stuck the init with nib name. That terrible, terrible, terrible piece of code in there. And uh, now what do we do in this code? This terrible piece of code. It's not a terrible piece of code. It's actually just I need to make it so I can cut and paste better. So we added a UI bar button system item search button. So the navigation items has a right bar button item. So there's on the bar there's a navigation button. You press the button and it loads up another bar on the bottom that's going to allow us to change colors between different, um, change the background color essentially. So the button will replace, be placed on the top navigation bar on the top, top right hand side next to a set of three bar buttons, red, green and yellow, uh, green and blue, or on a spacer, and a spacer in between the buttons, and the buttons are going to have a selector on there, and I'll talk about the selector in a few minutes. We're going to initialize the title, set the title of the bar itself, and then set the background color. So what does this thing do? Well, let me just demonstrate it so you know what I'm talking about, and then we'll go through the pieces of the code that I so, uh, here we go. So when I loaded it up a few minutes ago without loading the code into the main view controller.m file, that code that I just spent a few minutes trying to paste in there, I didn't have this. Now if I have this and I press on this, I get an error message. I get unrecognized nib file. Well, if it works correctly, actually I know how way I know a way of getting it to work correctly. I'm gonna open it up, close the project, close all these files, and reopen it from here. Ah, good, good, good. We're going to get this to work. <laughs> so now it was complaining about a memory problem, probably because I had one of my variables changed because I cut and pasted the code out of another project. This is what you're supposed to get. It's missing. I give up. You get a little thing here. The little thing here opens up a bar on the bottom of the screen that has red, blue. Actually, you know what? I'm determined here. What did I do? Did I cut it out of here? I cut it out. Main view controller. Oh, this is that. Wait, 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 wait. That in file. Start it now. Hold on a second. Ha! A 
fix the problem. Whew. Okay. <laughs> this is what the finished app is supposed to look like. If you put the code in the right spot. When you press on blue, it changes to blue. Press on red, changes to red. Press on green, changes to green. This little guy here, as we just saw a few minutes ago, didn't appear until I fixed the main view controller code. The main view controller code that is controlling it is the init with nib name. And that code is essentially what's controlling the functionality of the controller. This is what would be referred to as the navigation controller. And it has the old title because I loaded it up from a different project that was saved. And you can see that the buttons here are changing the background. The buttons here are in the code. So now we can actually read the code because it's not all full of formatting characters. It's setting up the button items uh, for each one of them dynamically within the code. So it's setting this, in this particular case, the red button, the blue button, the spacer. And the spacer is essentially this piece here in the middle. So we put a spacer in there. Actually, there's a space between the two buttons as well to space out the buttons so that they don't all appear back to back. And then the button functionality is a simple simple switch on, um, excuse me, a simple um, button test. So if this button is test, the title red, the style, change the style in the selector with uh, the style of the background to red, essentially, the style of the background to blue, the green, so basically changing the background color. And then the toolbar items that are being placed is in a form of an array, and the array has the blue button, the spacer, the green button, and the nil, and the red button over there. Actually, the red, the one on the right is right aligned. It's not that is not a space. This is not a space. This is right aligned. This is left aligned with a space in between. So what do we do? We added the uh, the button selector. We put the navigation in there. The three buttons have a selector who's uh, defined in terms of the uh, functionality for the button clicks. The functions of the spacer is to add the flexible space between the blue and the green. And the flexible space, so we're acting as a spring, kind of a spring, I don't know, separates them a little bit, separates the buttons, so that makes it look better. Now we add the buttons and we add them to the toolbar, so it's actually sort of a nested process where the buttons themselves, this bar is added to the toolbar by this button here. It's making it visible. The toolbar is the main navigator. So we nested essentially all of the components. This is the still the same background. This is the original view controller that we started out with. So each one of the view controllers has its own toolbar navigation property. We can actually change them and modify it programmatically. So without, you know, without experimenting any further on this, because uh, I don't have the patience for it, we can actually add more controllers to this, we can add and change the functionality of this um, to bring up different buttons, or to bring up, you know, put. Um, I've seen this done successfully before with uh, images, um, look, looking very similar to the tab view. Uh, but this is not a tab view. Uh, but the tab view usually shows up in terms of the navigation controller. It's used with a similar kind of functionality. So we stuff the toolbar buttons array and the three buttons in the space are inside of the toolbar. So we created the items. We added to the um, main view controller.m. We implemented the four methods. Um, and this is why it wasn't working, actually, because I didn't take this last step to implement the buttons. So the methods here are the ones that are going to toggle. Actually, without this in here, if you had just cut, pasted, and stopped at that point, when you press the buttons, the buttons aren't going to work. In order to make the button functionality work, you've got to toggle the, it's a toggle, uh, toggle toolbar where you're changing the states. So the bar states are going to, we're not going to, we've got the animation on in terms of opening and closing, but on the button red touched, on the button blue touched, on the green button touched, you're setting the UI color. And then setting UI color to cyan color to blue color, which is where we're getting the different cut, the, on the button clicks is where we're getting all of the different changes in terms of the properties. So what we're doing is a dynamically changing the property of the background given the button clicks. So, and if you add this into the main view controller.m file, which I skipped because I cut and pasted it, um, that's the last piece. If you don't have that in there, click the buttons and the button colors aren't going to change. So you put that in there and the 
but the colors will actually change for you. So the toggle bar gets the hidden properties of the toolbar and it sets the properties uh, to, its, um, to, to its proper values. And so in order for the toolbar to be hidden, as, as it's shown, it's going to be shown hidden in the originally. So the toolbar is hidden. We can actually make it come up automatically if we wanted to, but we set the state to hidden, so it actually comes up. Uh, the three buttons are touched, and uh, it sets the color of the view's background as we've seen in the demo. So here's the program output, essentially. Um, so if you didn't get that, you can go through it a little bit slower, cut and paste it. This is the key I didn't show you, actually. It's the, did you get it to work? No? no? Oh. Well, you have to, after you get this big old massive code cut and pasted in successfully, then take and modify the same file and add this to it. I use, actually, I believe this is probably added to the top of the file. Nope, I put it on the... Uh, it's on the bottom. It's underneath it. Yeah, I just put it underneath. I cheated by cutting and pasting it out of another file, which I had stored. So. Well, that was a good experiment. In any case, you can probably get that to work, uh, because I basically have demonstrated it actually... Actually, I tried it out earlier to make sure it did work, uh, which is where I got that piece of code I cut and pasted from. So I know it works. So, so categories, uh, in terms of the concept here, categories are very uh, powerful tools for adding functionality to existing classes. So when we added a category class, all the child classes of the class will inherit the added methods as well. So this is a further exercise. We can add other things to this as well, other categories, replace the strings, and do something different with it. So we can definitely take that project and modify it out, actually. So. All right, so uh, designing with introspection. So the last and last but not least, this is probably the easiest project, which is why it's coming last, which is nice. Because the topic of tonight and the, the exercises were about dynamic binding. So dynamically changing background colors, dynamically changing text, um, nesting a uh, navigator inside uh, one controller inside of another controller, working with multiple controllers and things. Um, and so we're going to add in a new thing here. Um, in terms of the design, we're going to start a brand new project. And this one doesn't have any coding at all, which is really nice because there's not going to be very much cutting and pasting. So in Objective-C, um, it allows dynamic binding. Everything is done dynamically, actually. So a feature that makes it possible to postpone decisions about classes um, that we're going to be dealing with. So in order to make this kind of decision, you need to be able to determine exactly which classes are, you're going to be dealing with. So let's create a simple um, application again. I'm going to close. Actually, looks like I already did close it down, which is good. So I'm going to go create a new project. This one's a little bit easier than the last one. so. If you gave up on the last one, start fresh, because this one's going to work for you. Click on Next, and uh, which one is this one? This one is going to be called uh, Introspection. I'm going to label it Last One, <laughs> so I can at least find it on my cluttered desktop already. And I'm going to select iPhone, I'm going to use Automatic Reference Scanning, and I'm going to press Next. And I'm going to save it on the desktop, so I can throw it away later. And lo and behold, I have a template created. And uh, so now we're going to create an interface using, we're not going to add files, which is nice. We're just going to drag something in. So we're going to drag a view from the library and put it into the window. So if you came from the Android class, you remember putting um, layouts inside of layouts inside of layouts. That's what we're doing tonight. We're going to take a view and put another view inside of it. And then we're going to load stuff inside of the view. And then we're going to see how we can dynamically get at those different view components. So what I'm going to do is click on the XIV file, which gives me a view. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select view. And I'm going to copy the generic UI view if I can find it. Actually, let me do it this way. UI view. View. We want the item view that represents a rectangular region in which to draw and receive events. I'm going to put the view in here. If I put it in here, it goes to the full view content. 
which is going to take up the whole view. But I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to, because I want to use the outside view too, I'm going to make it smaller. There we go. So we got a little view in it. And I'm going to change uh, the background as white, which is good. Okay, good. It just shows up, uh, you know, blue when I click on it. So now I have a view inside of a view, which basically gives me just two separate, you know, it's like taking in that uh, layout and putting it inside of another layout. So you're going to put eight labels in the view, and you should have a large white square with the UI view object containing the eight labels, and then all the other controls go in the main view. So it looks like your finished product looks like this. So I'm going to change the background here because everything's white. Because otherwise, if you don't change the background, you get white on white. So I'm going to take and change the background and make it uh, go for gold. Go for the gold now. So now I'm going to stick uh, a little label up here and call it uh, introspection. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a label down here. drag it up here and call it uh, intro inspection. There we go. It doesn't really matter what you call it. We're going to change the label to hello world or something. So, so you want a label and then uh, you found the view? Or did he do it for you? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, go in because you know you just arrived here. From a, you, actually look at the um, you don't even need the PPT for right now. Um, search on UI view in the library, drag a view onto your view. It's single. It's the one that looks like this. That says view on it. There's different types of views. There's table views, list views, and we're going to definitely explore all those different views soon. But this is just the view view. And what we're doing, if you open up the PPT, we're creating this window here. So I put the label up, I put the view up. Now I'm going to put uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight labels. And so I'm going to go ahead and drag eight more labels in here. I know it's a lot of labels, but uh, we're going to change the labels. Uh, so let's see. One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, I mean, mine's going to be sloppy. <laughs> Three, four, okay, very good. And then I'm going to need one, two, three, four buttons. These are test buttons, so I'm going to put uh, some buttons on here. Uh, so I'm going to go in here, and a UI rectangular button works fine. So buttons, there we go. We got, uh, it doesn't really matter what you call it. Because we're going to drag and drop them over, so I'm going to call it test. Uh, test one. Test two. Test three. And then we got test four. Oops. Test four. Okay, so hopefully you get something like that. Or if not, you're still working on it. So now we're going to add the items to the viewcontroller.h. This pattern should hopefully start looking familiar. So these are going to be the four buttons. We're going to call it test one press, test two press, test three press, and test four pressed. I'm going to use the touch button that button touched. So I'm going to click on my editor, my little tuxedo over here. Ah, very good. I got the view controller up. So I'm going to right mouse click on the button and I'm going to drag it over uh, the touch down, which is and press down the control key, touch down, drag over to the code. And this is going to be test one. Uh, what is it going to be called? Test one pressed with a capital P. And then I'm going to change the type to UI button and then press connect. And I'm going to do that for the other four buttons. We don't have to do that for anything else because we're just going to control the buttons. So two, right mouse click. I usually end up having to move the button box up a little bit. Uh, so let's see. Test two button. And 
control. Oops. Touch down. Test three button. Connect. And last but not least, test four button. Let's see, touch down. Control. Yep. Test four button. Oh, you know what? I can call them buttoned. Oh well, pressed is what I meant to say. That's okay. I can just change the labels when I put it in. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to change it right now so I'm consistent. And then I have to go to the .m file and change it there as well because the synthesizers are going to be wrong. Oh, but we're not using synthesizers, which is good. So. Very good, because there were button actions, but these button actions are going to be wrong, so this is pressed. You don't have to do this if you properly labeled your buttons. <laughs> so I have test 1, test 2, test 3, and test 4 pressed, which are my buttons. And they should, they're not lined up correctly, are they? Let's go back. Uh, test two is uh, not connected properly. Get rid of that one. Test two, touch down. There we go. And uh, let me just fix this other one here. Uh, let's test three. So now you know what it ends up happening when you um, change the labels of them in the code. You actually have to rewire them correctly, which is what I'm doing because I was too lazy to type in the correct one. <laughs> but you don't have to retype the code. You can just go like this. So this is number three. So it automatically makes the connection for you. OK, so I should be able to run it at this point and make sure that all the functionality works correctly. You don't get any strange memory errors. Okay, it looks looking pretty good. All right, so I don't actually have any functionality for the buttons yet, so I need to put the functionality in. But at least I have a working program. All right, so in the next step, and uh, so we're now we're going to declare. We, we, what we declared were the action methods. We didn't actually declare the properties. Uh, so we have four UI button objects with actions. We don't need the IB outlets for this. Um, so we're going to find uh, the controls in the view by inspecting the properties of the object inside the main view using introspection. So this is the code for the button pressing. And I know that I have this one out here. So in the uh, in the dot m we have to change the method bodies to include the method bodies for test 1 press, test 2 press, test 3 press, test the pressed and I know that I have this one out, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut and paste it out of my code that I copied earlier. So let's see. Um, introspection, here it is. And, uh, did I call it an introspection? Oh no, that is the one I just created then. Um, oh no, I called it last one. I called it last one. Uh, so let's see, view controller done in. Here it is. Very good. Very good, very good. And uh, I could actually drag this file in. Let me try that actually. Let me show you something actually kind of interesting. Let's say I decided I wanted to scrap my entire project because I didn't like it. I could. I have this viewcontroller.m file over here from the previous time. I could go into my project directory here and drive it, drag and drop it into here. Or I can actually lo o load up Xcode here and uh, drag and drop it into the project. And if I do that, I'm going to make the window a little bit smaller so I can see, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm dragging it over here. 
And this is, you know, I decided I'm going to rebuild my project, but I want to reuse the files that I had before. And I can let go. And I can say copy the item into our create group. So I'm going to copy the item into the destiny, de designated folder that I just selected, if needed. And it's probably going to give me an overwrite method. No, it didn't, actually, which is interesting. So it should have copied and replaced this one. Oops, let me make this bigger again. So now I should have, oh, I have two of them in here. Interesting. Did I misspell one? Hmm. It was empty. Oh, weird. It should have replaced it. Oh, did I drag it to the wrong folder? I must have dragged it to the wrong folder. Ah, here it is right here. You're right. You're right. I need to put it in here. View controller. No, I have two of them. This is interesting. It should have replaced it. Well, that's the old one. That's the new one. Yep, that is the new one. So I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to delete this one. That is interesting. It should have replaced it. It should have found it, but I dragged it into the wrong hierarchy, though. You're right. Uh, actually, let me see. It should have replaced it, which would have given me those, those button functionalities. So let's see what happens, actually. Yeah, it did replace it. it did, I had to delete the first. I had two of the same file in the same folder, but I never saved the project. I just created a new project and I never saved it. I don't know, maybe that, that that shouldn't have happened. It should have asked me to overwrite it. How can you have two files with the same name in the same folder? <laughs> so anyway, it worked because uh, the functionality is working. So all right, so let me uh, finish the example. Uh, but technically, I guess the better thing to do would actually be to close, save the project, close it, create a new project, save it, drag and drop the files, put them in the correct folders. You can also do it out here. So this is the last one that I created. And so I can go in here. I I would have seen, it would have been impossible, but I would have, would have seen two viewcontroller.m files out here, I guess. But I should have replaced it. So. Okay, so this is the code that I cut and pasted and I just put in. A, <laughs> well, actually, I just took the file that had this in it and dragged it over. But this is the code that we um, added to implement the functionality. And the functionality is really not doing that much. So what is it doing? Well, it's allowing you to take the view and it says, well, if the view, is it a member of label class? So what is it? So we have two separate views. We have the inner view that had the eight labels on it. And then we have the outer view. The outer view only has one label on it. And it has a bunch of buttons. So it's easy to find that one label. Um, so this is kind of using a, a roundabout way of accomplishing the task. But it's looking at the view and it's saying, well, are you of a label type? If you are, do something. So all these labels get treated the same and all these labels out here, but there's only one label is going to get treated the same. So on the number one pressed, it's going to essentially change the label on the top, on the background label. Um, to, to back, the background color of the label to red. And then on the number two pressed, it's going to change the, the inside labels. Um, so actually, we'll just run it and see what happens. So Of course, my labels aren't necessarily lined up correctly. but So when I press button number one, it changed this label, which is on the same view the background color to red, which is what it was supposed to do for a UI color. It's set a UI color to red color for UI label, but there's only one label out there. So if it checked to see if on the view if it's a member of the class UI label class. So it's really checking the class, which is kind of the dynamic part of this entire exercise here, was to basically show you that you can actually look at the class from a dynamic perspective, see what kind of class you are. Are you, are you a UI label? Okay, good. Change your background to this. So we didn't actually, you know, we, if we had two labels out there, it would have changed both labels. It would have changed the background on both of them, um, which is what it's going to do on the inside. So on the second button press, I thought I had this running, didn't I? Yes. On the second button press, button press number two, 
well, it changed this background label because, and in these background, it changed all the backgrounds to blue. So even the buttons have backgrounds on blue in it right now. Because on the second button press, the blue color was sent to UI color, but this is on the view. So on the U, if it's a view UI class, so the view itself, they're all views. So it's going to send all the views, the the message to set your background color to black, uh, to, to blue. And then on the third, it says hello up here. So it changed the label to hello. So on button press number three for ID, and we didn't actually put an ID on there, but we used the UI view, and we said the selector set text. So for all of the ideas that we have a set text for, and we only have it for the label, we'll set the text on the, the view to hello. So it was kind of blindly assuming that we could set a text on something. So it's going to set the, the text on the only thing that it probably could set a text on, which would be the label. And then on the fourth button test, it's changing the background colors of the labels that we stuck in here. So, oops. It's looking at the, uh, on the UI view, which is in the view inside of the view. So we have the loop in here. So we have for the UI view, go through the entire thing, and then go into the inner UI view. And then for the inner UI view, excuse me, UI view, change the label. If you're a label here, change the label background color to green. So what it's doing is it's looking for groups of items. So by doing a, a loop inside of the view, inside of the view, essentially, in terms of the message. So it's only changing. It's not going to change this background color. It's just going to change these guys because we're doing it inside on this particular view. And it's going to loop through all of them. So add the methods immediately after the .m file, run the program. What's it going to do? It first looks to see, it so looks at all of the subviews of the main view, finds them. If it uses an is member of class, so the is member of class is the key in terms of the coding because that's giving us the class category. And then if it is, apply something to it. So if one is determined if the, the view is a UI label, UI label is the GUI label. So that's the class. So it knows the object was created of that particular class. If it is, it returns yes, and the object of the instance that one is specified for the class it exists and it can do something with it. So if this label finds the UI label, that is the subview of the main view, it's going to set the background color to red. And that's where we got the red there. The label objects inside of the white square on the UI view don't get the background color set to red. Just the outside one does. And a slightly different coloring from the screenshots I took earlier. So this is the this is because these labels are subviews of the view. They're not part of the same grouping. Um, so they don't direct do not direct subviews of the main view. So it depends on which view we're, we're actually kind of looking at. It's the same concept do we get in the Android environment where we do the um, um, the layouts. We put a layout inside of a layout and then we can do something to the layout and then to something to all of the components inside of the layouts by making them you know, relative positioning or making them linear or making changing some component about them. You know, uh, which is pretty much the concept. So the second test looks at all the subviews in the main view and designated as a UI view. So it finds this, the second test finds this UI view and then changes the view um, characteristics. So it's accomplished by calling it is kind of class method. Since all the controls are descendants of the UI view, this method will con change the background color to blue, which is what it's doing there. So. And again, the background color of the labels of the internal white square is unchanged since the background color of the color of the UI is label is transparent. So the colors of the labels aren't really changing. It's just the it's transparent, so it's showing through. So test number three searches the views of the object for the set text method. Um, and it accomplishes by using it. It's actually kind of a blind set text. So it can so can it perform an action method? Can we set the text? Yeah, if it's a label, you can. If it's a button, it can't. So even though we had the four buttons and we had the label all on the outside view, the main view, the set text only works on one of them. So blindly just found that one. If I put another label out there, if it could find it, it would change the text on that as well. So since only one of the subviews of the main view has a set text method in the UI label at the top, the method changes the top text button, the UI label to hello, which is where we get the hello up here. So, 
And test number four shows one way to get the label objects in the white view, one way to get the label objects. So first you find the sub view of the main view and it's member of the UI class. Then look for the UI sub views and that view of the labels and then set their background color to green. So it takes and goes into here which is the outer for loop and then goes on the inner for loop, finds the labels and sets the backgrounds of the labels. All about nesting. Same thing you get actually on the Android flag. In fact, this looks like very Android-ish actually because you took a layout, put it inside of a layout, put it inside of a layout, put it inside of a layout. You can do the same thing on an iPhone, which is what this is demonstrating. And it's dynamic, which is the same thing you get on the Android actually as well because you can change all the characteristics of the interface while the application's running. While the app is running. It doesn't have to be set beforehand, as you can see. Introspection is useful when you have a large number of similar controls and you want to find a particular control by looking at some attribute, for example, a tag like set text or background color. When you want to find that particular component, you just do a search through the UI view and you can actually, and if you have it subviewed, as an example, you know, if this is sub, this is a smaller search space. So you can do something to all of these guys in here, something to all these guys out here. And you can also, you know, put another view inside of the view if you wanted to. It's also useful for when you're using inheritance, uh, when you might want to all subclasses of a some class to perform a method, but only if that method is defined. And if it's not defined, then it's not a member of that subclass, so don't you're not going to perform that method. Since you might not know what objects will be forming the methods at compile time, you can see the introspection probably going to be very good. So if you think about the dynamic in instantiation of objects, which come, kind of goes back to the objective C class discussion we had earlier, if you can change an object into another object and it can transform through the inheritance hierarchy, you can actually just do a check on all of your objects, see what they are, and if they have this attribute, if they've been tagged with something that says, hey, I'm a person, or I'm a this, or I'm a that, you can do something to it. You're probably going to do it with the UI components. You're probably not going to bother doing it with, um, well, you could. You could do it with other things, especially, let's say, for example, you're running a, a checkbook a app or something that's doing a checkbook registry. You go, well, give me all the debits, make all their backgrounds red. <laughs> give me all the credits, make them all green or something. And change labels and things. Given the class object, you know, this object is of the class credit. This one's of the class debit and you can control the objects that way. Anyway, just more food for thought in terms of your iPhone development. Uh, so next time, we are probably going to go through some more examples. However, I'm never going to use PowerPoint again. <laughs> I'm going to switch the format to make it easier. This is kind of an experimentation because these are all new examples. They're all new projects uh, for the new platform, utilizing the new interface features and stuff. So. Long story short, you're seeing the trial runs. <laughs> so the next group will have definitely a smoother demonstration of all this. Um, but it's kind of fun in the same time. I believe I'm going to go to a text file format, however, so I can cut and paste. And actually, I'm also toying with the idea of maybe including the .h and the .m files in the example codes. So you can just drag them, drop them in there, because I see that worked pretty well when I did that. So, so you can download the code actually and just drag and put it into the project. <laughs> so we'll see how that works. All right, so uh, that's all for tonight and I will see you Monday so with more stuff. Okay, see you later. Have a good weekend.